Oh, and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at introduction to corporation. This topic is typically covered in a financial accounting course. It's also covered on the CPA exam FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. You should connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create a LinkedIn account. This way you will build your professional network and stay up to date in your industry. If you're a Facebook user, you can like my Facebook page. You wanna make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. I do have a Twitter account and I do have a website and I'm on my website, I always try to get you the best CPA deal out there. So let's talk about the major characteristic, characteristics of a corporation. So what is a corporation? Well, let's think about it. An individual might start a business on their own. What type of a business? Could be a landscaping business. You'll start the landscaping business and you will operate as a sole proprietorship. Or sometimes what you can do, basically sole proprietorship means by yourself. So you don't need to incorporate, you don't need to do anything. You just run your business, you have a profit, you have losses, and that's that. Or what you can do, you can ask someone to join you. So if you have two individuals, we call this a partnership. That's also a form of uh, form of conducting your business. A third way to start the business is to incorporate. Well, what does incorporating mean? It means starting your own corporation. What does that mean? It means one individuals or those two individuals, they will turn into a corporation. What does that mean? It means they create an entity that's separate than this is individual A and this is individual B. What individual A and individual B did, they created a new person. This is a new person. And that new person called the corporation, the landscaping corporation. So it's an entity that's separate and distinct from the owners, from owner or owners. You could only have one owner or you could have many, many owners. But this is what the basic idea of a corporation. So let's take a look at the different type of corporation that we have in the real world. But this is the basic idea. Corporation can be classified by purpose or can be classified by ownership. Let's talk about purpose first. For example, a corporation could be for profit and most corporations are for profit. For profit means they operate to generate income uh, for their owners like McDonald, Nike, PepsiCo, Google, those are corporations for profit. Corporations could be for not for profit, not for profit entities like the Salvation Army, American Cancer Society, the American Red Cross, those are not for profit. So this is, they could be classified by purpose or they could be classified by ownership. And I do believe ownership classification is more common than a, cl a classification by purpose. What does ownership, uh, classification of ownership? Corporation could be publicly held or could be privately held. Well, let's talk about McDonald's. What does publicly held means? It means you and I, you and I, who is listening to this to this uh, recording right now, can buy can buy ownership in McDonald. Why? Because McDonald is a publicly traded company. You can buy ownership in Nike. You can buy ownership in PepsiCo. How would you buy? Well, depending on what the stock price is, you can buy shares in Google. Those corporations are public. Public means anyone can buy them versus privately held corporation. So now we have the same corporation, except that not, not everyone can buy into the corporation. It's not publicly held. You have to find someone. Here they give the example of Cargill. I always like to give the example of Wawa. So if you live in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, uh, Virginia, you, you would know what Wawa is. It's, it's basically a convenience store. I like Wawa. That's why I always give the example. Wawa is a privately held corporation. So I cannot buy Wawa stocks. Actually, I can, but I have to find someone who's interested in selling the stock to me. Okay. So I want to make sure you understand what public versus private. Private means you can, not everyone can buy the stock. You easily, that easily, you have to find someone who has the stock. There's another term to call privately held. Sometimes they call them closely held corporation. It means they are closely held. Usually those corporations are owned by families. Usually. Doesn't have to, but usually. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of a corporation? Now, bear, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're listening to this recording and if you are one of my students, you're going to have several multiple choice questions on quizzes and on exam testing you on the characteristic 
the advantages and disadvantages of a corporation. So characteristic that distinguish corporation from other form of businesses, which is a sole proprietorship, one person or partnership, multiple person. We're going to talk about separate legal existence, limited liability, transfer of ownership, ability to acquire capital and continuous life. Those are considered advantages. Then we have three disadvantages, corporate management, government regulation and additional taxes. So we're going to cover each one of those very briefly, but you want to make sure on the exam day, you know how to differentiate between an advantage and a disadvantage. The first advantage of a corporation it's a separate legal and separate legal existence and this is separate from a sole proprietorship or a proprietorship where one individual owns the business and they're not incorporated they are not a separate legal entity same as partnership you are part of the business but if you are a corporation you become a separate legal entity remember you are separate from the business so corporation acts under its own name rather than the name of the stockholders so simply put this is the stockholder and this is the corporation. Now the stockholder and the corporation, this is one entity and this is two entity. And this individual might own 100% of this corporation. So this individual owns 100% of this corporation. Nevertheless, the corporation is a separate legal entity. And that's not the case if you are a sole proprietorship or a partnership. You and the business become one if that's the case. The second characteristic or advantage of a corporation, it's a limited liability of stockholders. What does that mean? It means you are limited to your investments. So how much can you lose when you invest in a corporation? It's how much you invested in that corporation. Transfer ownership right. What does that mean? It means it's easily you can sell your shares. And if you pass away, the shares can be passed to your kids or grandkids. So transfer of ownership means you can easily sell. You can sell the shares and if it's a publicly traded it's even much easier just you open your computer and you sell your shares it's very easy another advantage is ability to acquire capital capital means money ability to acquire capital means it's easier to obtain capital usually it's easier if the company is doing well because you have many people pulling their money together so it's easier to obtain capital through the issuance of stocks we're going to talk about the stocks shortly Continuous life, that's another advantage of a corporation. Continuing as a going concern is not affected by the withdrawal, death, or incapacity of stockholder, employee, or officer. I want you to think about Apple computers. Okay? And think about Steve Jobs, okay? Guess what? Steve Jobs passed away. Apple computers survived. So the corporation is supposed to survive their ownership. Now let's talk about the disadvantages. The first disadvantage is the separation of ownership and management after reduce an owner ability to actively manage the business. Now you have to understand what we are trying to say here. Again, this is the individual, this is the owner of the corporation, and this is the corporation, this box. Now this individual, they have other jobs, they have other work to do, they have other jobs, or they have they own stocks in many different corporation what does that mean it means this individual here they cannot manage this corporation they cannot manage this corporation they cannot manage this corporation at the same time so what do they do they hire management they hire management on their behalf to run the corporation now what does that mean it means you cannot control what management is doing you have you don't have the ability to actively manage the company so you're basically giving your money to someone else and that someone else may not have the best interests or your interests and their interests may not be aligned. Managers, they want to increase their salaries. Your interest as an owner, you want to make profit. So that's a disadvantage of a corporation. You don't have that control, especially when the corporation grows. Okay. Managers who are not owners are often compensated based on the performance of the firm. So one way to align your interests and the managers is to say, well, I will pay you as long as the company does well based on a percentage. Okay. Another disadvantage of the corporation is heavy government regulation, and usually this is the worst reason, or at least that's what's quoted the most by corporations or owners of corporation, have heavy government regulation. If you're publicly traded, you have federal regulators overseeing you. You have the stock exchange requirement. You have the Securities and Exchange Commission. You have state laws. All these organizations, they impose rules on you because you are 
corporation and specifically if you are publicly traded it's even much much more stringent regulation what does that mean from a regulation perspective to comply with regulation you need money so it's going to cost you money and that's a, that's a disadvantage for example the sec want you to make certain disclosure the state they want you to file certain reports the federal government want you to comply with certain rules so it's just it costs money overall also corporation you have additional taxes additional taxes means corporation pay income taxes as a separate entity in addition to the stockholders remember let's go back to this picture you are an individual and this is the corporation the corporation pay taxes okay then whatever's left profit whatever profit after the corporation pays taxes goes to the individual then this individual also pay taxes on the same profit from the corporation so the taxes is paid twice for the same profit this is called double taxation so the profit is taxed once on in the corporation then it's taxed twice when the when the uh, when the profit is distributed to the shareholders and this is what a typical corporation would look like it doesn't have to be but this is what a typical corporation on the top are the stockholders stockholders means the owners the people who invest the money those are on the top in theory because they own the company this individual this group vote vote for the board of directors uh, and the chairman they vote for this for this group of people this group of people and they can vote themselves as a stockholder you can vote yourself to be on the board or to be the chairman if you have enough vote and each stock equal to one vote so the more stocks you have the more voting power you have this group will hire the president and the ceo this chief executive officer then the chief executive officer will hire individual to work for them they would hire individual underneath them then those individuals would hire employees and those people would run the company on your behalf which you are the stockholders the stockholder how do we form a corporation the initial steps is you file an application with the state so the first thing you have to know the corporations are state incorporated so we don't have federal corporations each corporation is born in a state in a state so you have to file with the state so the state grants what's called a charter grants you the permission to operate and you have the corporation have to develop bylaws bylaws means laws within how the corporation is being run and that has to be given to the state and it has to be complied with inside the corporation okay generally incorporate in a state whose laws are favorable to the corporation form of business generally speaking delaware is very favorable as well as new jersey delaware is very favorable because they don't have state income tax so the corporation don't have to pay state income tax we're not concerned about sales tax okay also in state of delaware sorry in the state of delaware there's no sales tax that's not why you, they incorporate there they incor incorporate because there's no, no state income tax so when the corporation makes a profit they have to pay the federal government they don't have to pay the state government if they are in delaware and i know many individuals that i do their taxes for they incorporate in delaware corporation engage in interstate commerce it means if you have to sell your product in more than one state you must obtain a license from each state in which you do business the charter is often referred to as articles of incorporation just know the terminology now as a shareholder because remember you are on the top you are the shareholder you are the stockholder or the shareholders what what rights do you have well the first right you have is voting and sharing and earning so as a shareholder as i told you you can vote an election for the board of directors an action that requires stockholders approval now what what requires stockholders approval the bylaws each company will have their different bylaws and by the bylaws you will determine if you need to submit this issue to the to voting otherwise you can vote and again one stock generally speaking equal to one vote it means the more money you have the more vote you have another thing you can do as a shareholder you can share in the corporate earnings through receipts of dividend well let's make sure we under, understand what dividend is the company generate revenues they pay expenses then they have net income now this income is or profit now this income the company can either keep it or they can distribute it they can distribute it in form of dividend or they can keep it and when they keep it it becomes retained earnings if they don't keep it they give it to the shareholders which are the um, which are in form of dividend another stockholder right is something called the preemptive right and what is the preemptive right the preemptive right 
gives you the right as a shareholder to keep the same percentage of ownership when new shares of stocks are issued. This is what the preemptive right is. What does that mean? Well, let's assume currently you own 14% of the corporations. Let's assume the corporation in, in total, they have 1,000 shares in total, and you own 140 shares. What does that mean? Is mean you own you own 14% of this corporation. Let's assume the corporation decided to issue new shares. Now the corporation the corporation wants to expand, so they want to sell more shares. Why do they sell more shares? Because they need money. They need money to expand. Let's assume they want to sell 10,000 new shares. Those are new. Well, as a shareholder, you're the shareholder right here. You own 14%. They have to come to you first and ask you, would you be interested in buying 1,400? Why 1,400? Because if you buy 1,400, you will keep ownership at 14%. If you do so, then after the new issuance, you will keep your ownership. You don't have to. It's a right. Right means not an obligation. Okay? And if you watch the Facebook movie, the social uh, social network, I believe, the Facebook movie, one of the issues was the preemptive right in the movie. So if you happen to watch the movie, uh, one of the co-founder of Facebook, they took the preemptive right from him without him knowing. Okay, So a number of companies have eliminated this preemptive right. So again, you could, when you incorporate each state is different, so you do have the right to remove that right. Stockholder rights, they have claim on the on what's left of the what's left in the asset which is the residual claim on the asset what does that mean it means share an asset upon liquidation in proportion of their holding this is called the residual claim again what does that mean it means when the corporation goes out of business when they liquidate guess what anything that's left after they pay their employee they have to pay their employees they have to pay their taxes they have to pay their suppliers okay they have to run the business and anything that's left they have, first, they have to pay the creditors. They come first, before the shareholders. They come before. Then anything that's left after all said and done goes to the stockholder. If any, usually if you go out of business, these guys get nothing because <clears throat> nothing left after you pay the employees, the taxes, the government, the lenders, then nothing left for them. Okay, but if anything left, you know, the, the shareholders will distribute it. Stock issue consideration. So when the corporation decides to issue stocks, it's not, it's not resolve a number of basic questions. So when you incorporate, you have to decide how many shares you want to authorize for sale. What does that mean? It means you tell the state, I want to authorize, and there is no limit over this. Uh, for example, you tell the state, I want to authorize 10 million shares, or one share, or 10 shares. It doesn't matter. I'm going to just say 10 million shares. Okay? So authorized for sale 10 million then of those 10 million how ma how sh how should it issue the stock how should you issue the stock simply put are you going to sell the stocks directly to the public are you going to sell the stock uh, through an investment firm you have to determine this and the third thing is what value should the corporation assign to the stock and we'll talk about those so those are the three things we have to talk about next the first thing is authorized stock okay Charter indicate the amount of stock that the corporation is authorized to sell. So how many shares you want to sell, you'll get that authorization. You'll get that authorization. Number of authorized shares is often reported to in the stockholder's equity. Not often, it has to be reported in the stockholder's equity. So in the stockholder's equity, you would say authorized, they will tell you authorized 10 million shares. So they are authorized to sell 10 million shares. It doesn't mean they actually sold it, but they're authorized to sell that much. Now, whatever they sold, it's called issued. And if they sold it to the public, it's called issued and outstanding. So of the 10 million shares, they might only have 4 million issued and outstanding, and 6 million they did not issue yet. There's no formal entry for um, getting authorized shares. Now, uh, shares of stocks, this is what a share of stocks look, looks like in the old days. And why do, why do I mean by the old days? Companies no longer issue, issue you a certificate. So back then, if you own 100 shares of the Franklin Life Insurance Company, you will get a certificate. This is what a certificate would look like. You could have your name on it if you want to. They'll print your name on it. Um, and they'll tell you it's 100 shares. It will have certain features, security feature. They'll have your address. 
What does that mean? It means this is your proof. Now your proof is a computer entry. Now if you buy 100 shares of stocks, just go into your computer account, you buy the 100 shares. Company issues stocks directly to public, directly to investors, or indirectly through an investment bank. So how can you sell your stocks? You can sell them directly to public or through a bank, whatever you would like to, that's your, that's your option. Factors in setting the price of a new stock. So when a company goes public, and recently Lyft, Lyft is the uh, is is like uh, the equivalent of Uber. Lyft is uh, a, a, a sharing a taxi sharing company. So Lyft went public. So what factors go into issuing the price? How do we know what Lyft stock price is? Many factors goes into this. The company anticipated future earnings, expected dividend per share, current financial position, current state of the economy, current state of the securities market. Simply put, many things many things and this is what you would learn in finance but from an accounting perspective just know that many things goes into the setting the price of the stock initially okay then once it's sold once it's issued then supply and demand will determine the price the market price of the stock market price it means once it's publicly traded stock of publicly held companies is traded on an organized stock exchange what is organized stock exchange new york stock exchange or the nasdaq it means anyone have access to those stocks okay interaction between the buyer and the seller determine the price of the share once the stock is sold then the market will determine who's the market the buyers and the seller so generally speaking the prices of the stock tend to follow the company's earnings and dividend so the more earnings you have and the more dividend generally speaking the higher is the price and there are factors that are beyond the company's control may cause day-to-day -day fluctuation in the market price like if the oil price goes up well lift have no control over this then they have to their cost goes up therefore their profit should go down so many factors beyond the beyond the control of the company okay there's something called par and no par value which is we need to know what par value of a stock is and whether no par value years ago par value determined the legal capital per share that a company must retain in the business for the protection of the corporate creditor what does what does that mean this is first of all years ago it means it doesn't apply now par value is something assigned like for example for each stock you will you will say the par value equal to five dollars okay so for each stock you have to keep five dollars in capital and in, in money at the company that's no longer required that it used to be it used to be this today many states do not require a par value and if they require a par value the companies choose the par value 0 0.01 which is a penny or point point zero one or point zero 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 one this way to, to avoid this legal capital Okay, so what is a par value? It's an amount assigned to the stock. It's an arbitrary amount assigned to the stock. In other states, what they do, rather than having a par value, they call it stated value. So stated value, same as par value. Okay, just certain state use a different terminology. So that's all what it is. And we'll look, we'll look at par value and stated value once we start to issue stocks. So you'll see how it gets done, um, how it works. Okay, which of the following statement is false? So notice you're looking for the false statement. So you should have three correct statement and one false. Ownership of common stock gives you the owner the, gives you owner of voting. Of course, if you own common stock, you can vote. This is true. The stockholders equity section begin with paid in capital. We didn't get to this, but that's true as well. The, the authorization of capital stock does not result in a formal accounting entry. That's correct too. We don't have to do a entry legal capital is intended to protect the stockholders not really legal capital is intended to protect the creditors but again that's no longer valid which is the d is the right answer d is the right answer indicate whether each of the following statement is true or false a uh, similar to partners in a partnership, stockholders of a corporation have unlimited li unlimited liability. On the contrary, they have limited liability. This is a false. This is one of the features of the corporation. It gives you limited liability. It means you can lose only the amount that you have invested. It's relatively easy for a corporation to obtain capital through the issuance of stocks. And the answer is yes. This is one, the, one advantage of the corporation. You could easily, generally speaking, get money. The separation of ownership and management is an advantage of a corporate form of business. This is a disadvantage because once you don't know what's going on as the owner, the management could abuse the, uh, the funds in the company, they could abuse the capital, they could abuse their responsibilities. The journal entry to record the authorization of capital stocks include the credit to the appropriate capital 
Now, authorization does not have journal entry. All state require a par value per share for capital stock. No, remember, some, some, uh, some says you don't have a par and some call it stated value. That's also false. A corporate capital, um, there are two main sources of money, two main sources of money. Where does the money comes from for a corporation? Two primary sources of equity, two primary sources. So where does the company bring their equity from? Two sources. The first one is called paid in capital. And what is paid in capital? This is one, this is one. This is what the investors put in the business, okay? And the investors can invest in common stock or they can invest in another type of stock called preferred, which we'll talk about common and preferred later. So first the investors could bring money by investing in stocks and stocks gives you paid in capital we talk about paid in capital later the other source of funds of equity is retained earning and what is retained earning hopefully we all know what retained earning is is what the company earned and kept so paid in capital is the total amount of cash and other assets paid to the corporation by the stockholders so this is the fourth first source of equity is what the investors invested in the company in return they got capital stock Retained earning is a net income that a corporation retained for future use. It's net income that the corporation did not use. If Delta has a balance of 800,000 in common stock and 130 in retained earning, we would say that they have equity, equity of 930,000. So this is 800,000 is what the investors invested and 130,000 is what the company earned, earned. It means they earned it in net income and kept. Um, at corporation, they use the the account common stock, which has a normal balance of credit. Hopefully, you, you should know this by now. And retained earning, we should have a normal balance of credit. And we're going to be talking about these accounts later on much, much more in detail. Now let's take a look at this uh, just quick example. At the end of the first year of operation, D Corporation has 750,000 of common stock and net income of 122. Prepare the closing entry for net income and the stockholders equity section. So first let's close net income. So for a corporation, you debit income summary and you credit retained earnings. So net income goes into retained earning and increase retained earning. Hopefully this, this is no surprise to you. If the company made a profit, the profit goes into retained earning. Prepare the stockholders equity section. What's composed of stockholders equity? Well, we have 750 of common stock that should be there. And retained earning is 122 which is, this is the income that they generated. In total, total equity is 872,000. So this is basically an introduction to a corporation, just basic um, advantages, disadvantages, and terms. The next thing we're gonna look at is issuing common stock and preferred stock. This is where we're gonna be start to do some accounting work and go into the par value, the common stock, and the preferred stock. If you have any questions, please email me. If you're studying for your exam, make sure you study hard. Good luck.